Yeah, let us humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Lord Father, I thank you for this moment that you have given unto us. Father, I pray as we go in for this lesson, Father, according in agriculture, I pray that you will guide us and you will help us to understand everything Professor Moses is going to teach. And I pray that you shall put it in practice and be able to understand everything that is taught unto us, Father. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and quick understanding through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Isaac, for the word of prayer. Uh, I want to welcome everyone that has joined this call. Thank you so much for sacrificing your time uh, to be part of this journey in coding. Uh, yesterday, uh, I'm going to take you through a bit, just a summary of what really happened yesterday. Yesterday, we looked at wisdom coding at level one, and our major topic was applications of coding and the precise steps-by-step -step description of a life activity. So through yesterday, we were able to look at what we call wisdom of coding. And when they talk about wisdom of coding, it just means a practical experience of knowledge and understanding. And when you can, uh, those who were able to attend on Monday and Tuesday, we're looking at those two domains of the knowledge and understanding. So practical experience of knowledge and understanding is what uh, we are terming to as wisdom of coding. Uh, professor went on and also told us that communication and collaborations are, are very key disciplines. And those are the 21st century skills or what we are terming as the generic skills. So he talked about collaboration and communications uh, and they emphasize that they are going to be key uh, when it comes to this kind of coding. Then uh, we went on and looked at what are some of the challenges and problems that can be solved using the coding knowledge and some of the challenges, some of the agriculture challenges and problems that were identified. Uh, now here, Professor was able to look at the two things challenges and problems. And he emphasized that challenges and problems are two different things. So uh, when we looked at the challenges, uh, uh, the, a challenge is the response and the problem is the situation. So uh, when we ignore the problem, it becomes worse. When we overcome the challenge, then things will have to get much, much better. So when it came to uh, the challenges in agriculture, we looked at climate change and under climate change, that's where we looked at drought, fraud, uh, sorry, floods, heat waves, and so on. And also we looked at the market volatility. Then when it comes to problems, uh, problems, we looked at the pests, we looked at the diseases, we looked at the weeds, and we looked at soil degradation. So those were the problems and then we're able. Then we looked at how can we apply coding when it comes to solving those problems and solving the challenges and how we can be able to use. So Professor went on and, and he showed us that one of the applications of coding is what you call crop surveillance. You know very well that at times you may have a very big garden or you may have a very big piece of land but you may not know what is taking place in one area or the other. So we can use the coding ideas in order for us to be able to monitor our crops, to monitor uh, or even to detect which pests and diseases are affecting our crops. But also it can also help us to identify the nutrient deficiencies in the different parts of, of the garden. So the, in order for us to do that, we use the knowledge of coding. So that one, uh, Professor was able to, uh, to emphasize that, and also he was able to tell us a lot. Then also he talked about what we call the precision farming. Um, and we say that under the precision farming, 
uh, one of the things that we can be able to do is to manage our crops, to manage our livestock, monitoring. Some of us have those big pieces of things, but we may not be able to monitor them very well. So, and we can be able to minimize resource wasted using the coding knowledge, because you know very well that with coding, everything can be done uh, smartly using uh, simple tools, uh, uh, as well as being in position to maximize the available resources. So uh, we looked at a lot, we went on and looked at the environment, uh, data-driven farming projections, uh, farm management decision tools, and under projections, this is where we're able to look at uh, the predicted yields. When you plant this, what do you expect to get at the end? So you are able to predict what you might be able to get from your yields uh, for a particular season. You have seen very many farmers, you have seen very many people who are putting up maize, who are growing maize, beans, but they may not be in position to know what they should expect at the end of the season. So however, through the use of the coding predictive analytics, we can be in position to predict and even come up with accurate predictions on what you should expect at the end. So under this, you can also be able to know the plant growth data, the rates and everything. So it can be a very important idea uh, in this digital age. So uh, those are a few things that we were able to look at, uh, that we are able to look at, but also we looked at the step-by-step -step software solutions to soil testing. So under this, the professor was taking us through on how we can use the, what do we need in order for us to use the software when we are testing for the soil. And this is the one that we shall be using on the tool. So on the tool, that's when we shall have the practical session and we shall use this software to learn how do we test the soil. So our professor was able to identify for us to tell us the different uh, step by steps that we shall need in order for us to do a thorough test of the soil before we go on to plant our, our crops on any given piece of land. So, but one thing you need to remember is that under the step-by-step -step algorithm for soil testing, you need always to identify a sample unit from identifying a sample unit. You need to get a sample from that unit you have identified go dry it and then go for soil analysis, interpret, and then after you can be able to recommend which kind of crops that can grow in those areas. So those who were not here yesterday, that's what we are able to look at briefly. So we looked at that lesson and that was coding level one. Uh, so that is briefly, but we have already shared the work and we shall again continue uh, uh, we shall continue to share other things. Then uh, there is a form I'm going to share in the chat in case you have not yet filled that form. Uh, kindly I'll ask you to fill it in uh, as I invite the professor. So this form is capturing the details as we make preparations for next week. So we want to find out how many people are going to be in position to attend the practical session. At this moment, allow me now to welcome Professor to take us through today's uh, lesson. You are most welcome, Pro. Yeah, thank you, Stephen, for that excellent recapitulation of the proceedings of yesterday's lesson. And I want to welcome members for uh, this training, the lesson today. Um, I'm going to share uh, the screen going to share the screen. And please let me know if you are able to see. Yesterday we had technical challenges. Are you able to see the screen? Professor, I am able. Wonderful. Uh, so today's lesson is lesson number four, coding level two, and it is titled uh, Empowerment in Writing an Algorithm. I can see Basil has raised an hand. Basil? Uh, 
Uh, if he's not communicating. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was not seeing your your screen, but now I'm seeing. It's okay, doctor. Prof. Okay, thank you very much. So, lesson four is titled Empowerment in Writing and Algorithm, and it is a build on on yesterday's lesson of wisdom in coding, which uh, uh, Stephen has elaborated as a matching uh, knowledge, understanding to the real life problem. And so today, now we go into being empowered uh, to be able to solve uh, those problems using coding. Uh, the outline is as follows. There's an introduction. And then there are the empowerment skills that you need uh, in order to be able to have the capacity to code. And then there are some popular programming languages um, which uh, uh, you need to familiarize yourself with. Then we'll have an example of empowerment in writing a simple algorithm just as an example, and then we shall have acknowledgements. Empowerment. Empowerment in writing an algorithm is based on appreciating the role of technology in problem, in problem solving, uh, especially laborious uh, activities or tasks, such as uh, picking um, a name or a contact from the phone book, and it is simplified by smartphone programmed to emulate human action as you open the phone book or address book or contact book to pick a name. Uh, in the same way, um, we can be able to program our computers, select the soil that is most suited to growing maize, as we shall see later. Um, it also helps um, on the choice of category of algorithm. Uh, once you are empowered, you can be able to identify which category of algorithm uh, based on the principles for the software solution uh, that you have to solve a problem at hand. So the focus of this training today would be equipment with skills generally for implementing the step-by-step -step software solution that we saw yesterday, and specifically for a precise step-by-step -step description of a time-consuming laborious action, as mentioned earlier. So what are those empowerment skills uh, that you must have in order to be able to code? Um, there are programming languages. Uh, there are many of them uh, that are common, including Python, Java, JavaScript, C++. Later, we shall look at some of their strengths and relative advantages. So these are the requisite depending on the problem domain that you are addressing. Uh, as you know, um, a parent instructs or trains a child to grow up doing certain tasks. So we are also learning to train technology, whether it is a mobile phone, whether it is a computer, to undertake tasks to solve problems. So we must use a language that the machine can understand. So a language is a very prerequisite skill uh, for empowerment if you are to be able to do efficient and effective coding. Uh, then you need to have familiarity with data structures such as arrays, linked lists, graph, graphs, stacks, trees, trees, and this must be well understood in terms of their properties, operations, and algorithms for problem solving. Uh, then also you must have skills uh, on the algorithms like sorting, searching, graphical and dynamic programming in time, space, and this must be on your fingertips. Um, you also need to know the problem solving techniques that are based on principles. Uh, we have seen a little bit this earlier uh, in terms of knowledge, uh, the grid algorithms, uh, which kind of use 
uh, all the set of data, then the dynamic programming algorithms, then those which are modular where you divide and conquer, the recursive algorithms, the brute force algorithms, backtracking algorithm. So the knowledge of this is vital as we saw earlier. Then you need to have um, deep logical and analytical thinking. Strong skills are required to analyze problems, identify patterns, and develop effective solutions. So uh, critical thinking is required uh, in coding. Then you need skills uh, to debug uh, your software solution or your code. And you must also have skills to troubleshoot, to identify where the errors are and fix them in the code. As Stephen mentioned earlier, collaboration and communication skills are very important because uh, coding requires uh, teamwork, uh, it has many dimensions, big data and all of that. So you need to work with stakeholders to understand the requirements, discuss the solutions, share ideas, and see what is feasible, what can work, um, which one is uh, most appropriate under the circumstances. Uh, and as you know, uh, the technology landscape is ever changing, evolving constantly. So continuous learning is essential uh, in order to be able to be an effective coder. Uh, you also need to be one who pays attention to details. Due diligence is crucial for writing error-free codes and ensure that the algorithm functions to the expectation of the users. Uh, then it is always important to document and code organization. So you must have a well-structured and clearly written code um, that is readable and may, uh, stakeholders can be able to refer to it. So uh, we have seen that uh, a language in coding is very important. So um, our next topic are some of the popular programming languages. Uh, one of them is Python. Um, Python is very useful in programming. Uh, generally, uh, Python is used for multipurpose programming due to its simplicity and readability. It is useful for tasks such as scripting, web development, data analysis, scientific computing, and the automation of equipment and tools. Then it's also uh, widely used in machine learning uh, to train computers to be like people to be able to undertake tasks that otherwise humans do. It's also important in data science. So Python is the popular choice for machine learning, data analysis, artificial intelligence. And this is because of its rich landscape of libraries and frameworks, uh, IG, TensorFlow, PyTalk, Learn. Uh, Python is also used in web development because developers are able to build scalable and future-rich web applications based on rich Python frameworks such as Django and Flask. Java. Java is also um, a very popular programming language. Uh, just like Python, but Java is more useful in enterprise software development because it is robust and an independent platform with extensive libraries and frameworks just like Python, such as Spring, Ibernate, and it is widely used for developing large-scale enterprise applications. It is often used to build back-end systems, server-side application, and the Android Apple development. It is also used in the financial sector for financial applications. Uh, it is popular in the financial industry due to its security features, performance, and it supports distributed computing. So it can help in interlinked uh, banks when they are interlinked in managing your monies. 
It is used for developing trading systems, banking applications, and risk management software. Java is also used for desktop applications as it provides tools and libraries useful for building cross-platform desktop applications such as Java FX framework. Next, we have uh, JavaScript. JavaScript is useful for web development um, as uh, its primary language is used for front-end web development. It is used to create interactive and dynamic behavior on websites, including user interfaces, animations, client-side validation, and many modern web applications are built by integrating JavaScript and hypertext mark languages, HTML, and cascading style sheets, CSS. Uh, JavaScript is also used on the server-side uh, development, along with Node S, uh, which can now be used for server-side development. Because Node, Node JS allows developers to build scalable and high-performance web servers. So application programming interfaces, real-time applications also use JavaScript. So members, as you can see, uh, different languages have been adapted to address specific problems like web development, uh, financial enterprises, uh, data analysis, and all of that. So today we are talking about empowerment. If you are going to go into a website development, then uh, you must be empowered in JavaScript. Uh, then there is C++. It is also a popular programming language. It's powerful, efficient language for system level programming. And it is often used to develop operating systems, device drivers, embedded systems, and other performance critical applications. Uh, also, if you are developing games, C++ is the choice because uh, it is commonly used in the game development industry due to its performance and direct hardware access. It is used to build game engines, graphics, libraries, and performance critical game components. It's also very popular with high performance applications that require high performance, such as in research, where we do scientific simulations that take a longer time, big data and many numerical computations uh, that are performed, as well as in image or video processing. Uh, like if you are processing maps and all of those, um, then C++ is the choice language. So um, yesterday we looked at the step-by-step -step algorithm for soil testing um, as uh, Stephen reviewed, where we identify um, the soil sampling unit. Uh, we take the soil sample, we dry it, we analyze it, make interpretations and recommendations. So uh, this is an algorithm just describing the process. But then you can be able to develop the software solution in terms of coding. So uh, for practical, I don't know whether I call it practical, but uh, an example uh, for you in empowerment in writing a simple code in Python, uh, we will take a comparative algorithm uh, for three soils based on modular six interpretation. Here you can see, uh, actually it's supposed to be modular five, interpretation. Uh, so uh, we are not going to look at algorithm at first stage of identification of sampling units, soil sampling, drying, uh, soil analysis, but we are only going to look at interpretation and look at a simple example of how we do the coding in Python. So we have three soils. Uh, the optimum pH range for maize is five to six. 
And these three soils are tested and their pH values are as follows. The pH of soil A is four. The pH of soil B is 5.5. pH of C is seven. The question is, uh, write a code in Python language to identify which soil is most suited for growing maize. So we want to write a simple code algorithm uh, for these three soils. Uh, of course, we know the answer that uh, uh, the soil that has a, a pH range of five to five, but now we are seeing how we train the computer to begin operating this so that if it is repetitive, it can do it, or if there are many, uh, we simplify the work by writing uh, the code. So this is uh, a simple example of empowerment in writing a simple code uh, for interpretation of soils. So it is in Python. Um, so it defined the pH values of the soil. Soil A, pH is four. Soil B, uh, pH is 5.5. Soil C, pH is seven. Uh, then you define the optimum range, pH range for maize. Optimum pH minimum is five. Optimum pH maximum is six. So this is what we call coding. It is writing the algorithm to execute uh, the problem that we are trying to solve, identifying which of these three soils is most suited for growing maize uh, that uh, grows well between pH five and six. So the code continues. Uh, it is a comparison code. So it compares the pH values and determine the most suitable soil for maize. If soil A pH is greater than optimum pH, minimum and soil A, then pH will return optimum pH maximum. It will print soil A is most suited for growing maize. However, if soil B pH uh, is greater than the optimum pH uh, minimum and soil B pH is less than optimum Bro. pH maximum, then it prints soil B is most suited for growing maize. Elf soil CPH is optimum pH minimum soil CPH, optimum pH maximum, You're then it prints soil. Print C, soil C is most suited for, for growing maize. LS, print none of the soils are within the optimum pH range for growing maize. So you can see the code must be very comprehensive that it is complete and will be able to even print if there is no soil, none of those three soils um, is within the optimum range. So uh, that's how a code is written. But as I mentioned, it is important in this lesson today that you must be empowered in a language like Python to be able to solve, to write a code which solves such a problem. So this is basically the illustration of empowerment that you need in a language to write a code that solves a problem. So this category of algorithm is a rule-based algorithm that uses a series of conditional statement, if else, to make a decision based on pH values to determine the soil most suited for growing maize, uh, which eventually trades as soil B. So basically that marks the end of uh, this empowerment. I've been able to illustrate typical our code is written based on the skills we have seen and the language yes, that we have. And once again, I want to acknowledge Commonwealth of Learning Government of Uganda through its Board of National Council of Higher Education, the Government of Wakiso District Board of Directors, Light Open, the blended university members of Lob University Council, members of Truth Bible Church, Mr. Ronald Dungu, and of course, uh, Mr. Stephen. Thank you. Stephen, I submit.
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor, uh, for that wonderful presentation. I want to just find out from the members uh, whether uh, you have any questions uh, concerning what the professor was sharing with us. Anyone with a question? Okay, should I assume that uh, we are, at okay, yes, Basil. Yes, uh, thank you, Stephen, and uh, thank you, Prof, for the presentation. However, the last slide, as you were uh, trying to take us through the range of the pH, either your volume was low or the issue is minor, and it also got disconnected a bit. I'm sorry about that. It seems I, yeah, I can so see. It. I can see in the chat uh, that uh, the volume was slow, but I was uh, speaking at the top of my voice, so I don't know. Stephen, what could have been the problem? Did you have similar challenges? Because I was shouting at the top of my voice. Uh, Professor, I think it was uh, Basil's network. Eh? The, his network maybe was the problem. But you were very clear. Yes, because I was getting him clear. Yes, but maybe Professor, you can just take the take us maybe back such that you can okay. hold. Hmm. So through the entire presentation? No, the last the last slide. The last slide, eh? Yeah, where oh. you were looking at the coding bit. Okay. Uh, so the coding bit, as I mentioned, was a build on on yesterday's work where we described the step-by-step -step algorithm uh, that one has to write in order to complete the process of cell testing, several steps. But for today, we wanted to hammer down one point that empowerment is necessary if you are going to write an efficient and effective algorithm to solve a problem. So we just picked uh, module five of interpretation of results after you have analyzed the soil and we have pH results for three soils. Soil A with pH 4, soil B with pH 5.5, soil C with pH 7. Now for that particular module, we write uh, a comparative algorithm uh, to compare the different pH of the soil and identify which of those soils is most suited for maize, uh, given that the optimum pH range for maize is between five and six. Uh, so the question is, or the problem is, write a code in Python language to identify which soil is most suited for growing <clears throat> maize. Uh, you can ask similar questions uh, like here in uh, module one that identify uh, or determine the minimum number of soil sampling units. But in that case, the algorithm you write may be based on aerial images, maybe you have taken using aerial photographs 
or uh, cameras mounted uh, on the drones and all of that. Or it may be uh, for soil sampling and all of that. It may be for drying, maybe for analysis. But our focus now is a code for interpretation. So um, as Stephen mentioned earlier, the coding we are doing in agriculture is basically an entry into the whole door, but coding is done for all problems in life, in livestock health, in human health. Now here we are looking at soil health. So once you have these principles, you can apply them to any problem that you have really. It's only just the naming that coding in agriculture, but once you have the skills, then you can do it. So the topic today is empowerment. And we've mentioned that there are several skills that you have to know. And one of the skills we mentioned is you must have a language and the language is Python. So we used Python to write up the code to identify which soil uh, can allow the growth of maize. And so uh, the code is written uh, in Python by defining the pH values which are given for soil A, it is a four. Uh, for soil B, it is 5.5. .5. For soil C, it is seven. And uh, then the condition we are given is also presented in the code. Uh, define the optimum pH range for maize. Optimum minimum pH is five. Optimum pH maximum is six. Then the analysis or the comparison in this case, since it is a comparative algorithm, the pH values are compared to determine the most suitable for the soils. The algorithm is written um, by comparing uh, soil pH um, equal greater uh, than optimum pH minimum and soil pH less optimum pH maximum, then you print the soil is most suited for growing maize. That means if the pH of this soil is within that range, the minimum which is five and the maximum six, then it says A is most suited for growing maize. But of course, when it runs through, since soil A uh, is less, then it doesn't print that soil A is most suited. It leaves that out. Then you come to B. Uh, soil B has a pH of 5.5 .5 and the optimum minimum is five. So uh, the soil pH uh, is within the, the maximum is six. So it prints soil B is most suited for growing maize. So, uh, it is this component that uh, the computer or your uh, mobile phone will print that soil B is the most suited for growing maize. When it comes to C, C as pH 7, whereas the optimum pH minimum is 5, then the optimum pH maximum is 6, and yet C is 7. So it cannot print that soil C is most suited for growing maize. Uh, LS print, none of the soils are within the optimum pH range. Since we have soil B within the range, it is what will be uh, printed. So um, basically this illustrates uh, the essence of today's lesson empowerment, uh, that you must be able to describe the algorithm step by step, uh, then go through um, uh, the details of each of those steps. Tomorrow we shall be looking at the capacity. Uh, most of these things are repetitive. Uh, as you know, we started with the knowledge, understanding, then wisdom, where we identified a uh, soil fertility problem. So today we are looking at empowerment. Tomorrow we are going to go through the capacity again uh, like these skills, what you must know the details in order to develop the algorithm. So in a way, it's more of repetitive, the knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and then building 
uh, the capacity. So it is a build on. All you need to now appreciate is how empowerment comes in that you must be equipped with the skills, the languages, and all of that. Tomorrow we are going to have more details on what capacities are required, for example, in sampling, uh, in storage, uh, in quality assurance, in the data futures, and all of those, we shall be looking at all of those. Um, I hope that has helped. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. hope that's it. Yes, hope that's it. Uh, thank you very much, Prof, for that elaborate uh, uh, explanation you have given. I've got uh, uh, the, the the bit which I was missing. Uh, however, thank now you. I have some question. If I if if I may ask them. Yeah, uh, go one, ahead. Since you have started using now the, the Python, does the coding uh, allow us to use the, I mean, the, the, the script, in, the, the programming interchangeably? Can I use the Python and then later on I use Java or I pick only one and I go with that? Okay, that question helps me to clarify that uh, what I mentioned. I mentioned the four languages, uh, Python, Java, JavaScript, uh, then I also mentioned C++. But the point I emphasized, which may not have come out clearly, is that each of those languages has its own strengths. So when you are going to solve a given problem, in that domain, you have to determine which language you have to use. For example, we saw if you are looking at a financial industry dealing with money, accounts, then it's better you use Java. But if you are talking about data analysis and all of that automation, then Python helps. Uh, then when it comes to big, big maps and all of that simulations in research, C++ and all of that, then it comes to uh, website development, JavaScript. So, uh, by the way, maybe you are asking the, the question which will come tomorrow because now that's the capacity we are going to look at tomorrow. Then we move to the last one, which will be capability. So today was more to highlight that you need to be empowered if you are trying to this code to have these skills. Next question. Okay. Basi. Thank you, Prof. Um, then the next question now. Um, the language used, for example, in the last slide, uh, the second last slide about the, the optimum pH. And then somewhere yeah. you again introduce the minimum pH. <laughs> I was now seeing countries, the word just be suitable so that you have the proper range of uh, maybe that's 5.5 5 or to 6, because I'm confused by the term maximum, now I believe is the upper limit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, now you are talking about capacity in terms of syntax. Each language has its own syntax or rules uh, of the game. So you have to follow those. If you don't follow those ones, then uh, it gets errors and uh, it cannot run effectively. So uh, it varies all you have to see. This was more of a demonstration to show how we write an algorithm to train the machine to help us solve the problem. But you have to have the language. Uh, a long time ago, we used to write our basic languages, your own, like now you seem to be uh, you know, innovative. You can still do that, but you have to work. You have to get the libraries and you get the keywords. Then you work with the machine itself without these proprietary uh, softwares which are available. But uh, in this case, you have to learn that language and use those syntax, even the operators, the way they are. If you don't, then uh, it doesn't run. Okay, thank and so you. So the I question you are asking is that. really about the question you are asking is target on today's lesson empowerment. You must be empowered 
to effectively use the language, whether it is Python, whether it is JavaScript, and all of that. So what you can eventually or immediately begin discerning is that just like languages, we can only speak a few languages, maybe the mother language and maybe English. So even also you may not be very good in the maps and all of that in C+, then you are in Python data analysis, then you are in Java website development, you, you become a jack of all trades, but then you're not very little. So it means you must master one language if you are to do problems. So that's maybe the capacity we are going to talk about tomorrow. Okay, Professor, thank you for that uh, clarification. Because now I was just trying to borrow some information from um, SPSS when you are coding certain things, entering some data, you create your own yeah. depending on the, the symbol. That is what I was now trying to just to connect. If at all you can create your own syntax or now those ones which are already uh, programmed, you now just have to adjust yourself. Otherwise, thank you very much for enlightening us along that line. I appreciate that you are now beginning to link with other models like SPSS and all of that. Uh, so you can see uh, that SPSS, those models, um, in a way, there are some form of uh, codes or algorithms of sort. And so uh, you can, by the way, link one product uh, from one algorithm and you feed it in uh, like SPSS. You can do that. Maybe you write your own algorithm. You can link, like now you saw the steps in soil testing where you identify the sampling unit, you take the soil sample, then you do the drying. So you can write a code that uh, moves the one output, which becomes an input into another. And that's how your SSPSS can come in. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Do we have any other questions, members? Okay, okay. Okay, I feel uh, now we are on the same page. I want to thank the professor so much. Professor, thank you so much uh, for taking us through and for teaching us in You're this welcome. lesson. I want also to thank all those that have been able to join. Uh, thank you so much, dear members. Now, in the chat, I have sent a link. I've sent a link. Uh, some of you have not yet filled that link. Uh, so kindly, I want to request you, just click on that link. I want to prepare for you very well for next week for the practical paper. Uh, not even a paper, it's not a paper, for the practical session but we need to establish uh, the numbers we have. So we want to prepare for the particular numbers such that we can be sure that this person will be able to make it, this one will be able to make it. So kindly, I request that uh, fill that form, uh, fill that form, and then uh, we can be able to prepare very well. So in case you have not yet filled the form, kindly do. And in case you have with some of your colleagues who may wish to join the practical session, uh, feel free to let them know that still we still have space and we shall be closing uh, the form uh, very soon before the week ends such that uh, we can prepare for those people that are going to be able to make it to the venue. Uh, now, where is the venue? Now, the venue uh, is along Gayaza Lord. It's along Gayaza Lord. Uh, there's a place called uh, Gayaza Lord on where we call Kaya Stage, opposite Kateremwa Estate. So that's where we shall be. So it is along Gayaza Lord. Those who have ever been to Gayaza, it is along Gayaza Lord. Uh, the stage is called Kaya Stage and it is opposite Kateremwa Estates. So that's where we shall have our black course for the students. Uh, kindly let your parents know such that they can drop you on that day, uh, either early in the morning, but we shall be giving the program. Professor, do you want to add on something? So basically it is in a period where uh, after mm -hmm. we are see fuel station, 
uh, in a, a valley, but we are trying to put up a big signpost by the weekend. It will be light open and blended university. Uh, but uh, around there is also a school called Marvel's Academy. Uh, it's also between the method where they make uh, concrete products. And there are also a garden there uh, in that uh, valley. But um, I think maybe tomorrow we shall work and uh, send a pin so that the members can be able to uh, locate the place. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor. And let's meet tomorrow, dear members, for the session that is concluding our week. Uh, so let me wish you a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye.